Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Boxes of Comics. We are excited that you could join us today and as you watch this video we are going to go ahead and review the top 10 worst supervillains that have been created by Detective Comics over the years. This will be judged solely on my opinion on the characters and how I feel that they rank against other DC villains, whether or not they can actually defeat a DC superhero based off of uh, using research and knowledge from my comic books and try to like see where they rank. So the top and these 10 villains will also be ranked t number 10 through number one with 10. Uh, 10 is going to be the villain that probably doesn't stand a chance and there's probably the most useless out of the group. Round well, number one, probably the most silly, but could probably most definitely take down a superhero if he or she were ever to get lucky with it. So um, it's kind of based off of like mediocrity meter per se, you could say. Um, so if this villain is interesting to you and you would like more content, don't forget to like and subscribe along with sharing our videos to friends and family so you can discuss with everyone your top 10 worst DC supervillains. Alright, so starting with number 10, this character being ranked this low means that he or she is a pretty lame villain, but the idea and concept were interesting and intriguing to me. So coming in at number 10 is the villain known as Egg Fu. Originally a villain made to fight Wonder Woman, he was created by Robert Hanniger and Ross Andrew for Wonder Woman Volume 1, issue number 157. And just by looking at him, you know this guy's going to be pretty lame. He's just like a giant egghead, like Humpty Dumpty. And so, I mean, you can't really fight a supervillain if you're just a giant egghead. Moving on to number nine, we have the villain known as Big Top. She's part of Professor Pig's Circus of Strange, created by Grant Morrison and making her debut in the 2009 run of Batman and Robin number one. This film is definitely more crazy and kind of out there, but it's pretty terrible. So when it comes to the list of Batman rogues, she's probably not even in my top 10. Probably 50 if I had to guess. Moving on to number 8 is the Condiment King. Like Harley Quinn, this character first appeared in Batman the Animated Series and uses cheesy puns whenever he can. Lines such as... Um, Oh, Batman, you can never catch up to me and how I will relish this moment. It really sets the tone for how ridiculous this character is and kind of just... It shows that DC was willing to put anything into that cartoon and kind of keep it go going. To make things even more cheesy, da -da -da, he uses real condiments while fighting the dynamic duo. That's right. Better beware, Batman, because if you cross double cross the condiment king, you're gonna get ketchup on your outfit. Then what are you gonna do? Oh no, very threatening I would say. So he's number eight. Number seven is the villain known as Toy Boy. First appearing in the Atom number 31 in 1967, this villain known as Johnny Burns becomes Toy Boy when his mom experienced an event that gave her psychic powers and she gave him telekinesis and Toy Boy then goes on to use that to manipulate and control toys to help him with his evil doing. Yeah, just imagine that. Like, a little kid, he's able to, like, command his toys and tell him what to do. And when he doesn't get his way, he doesn't get his ice cream, he doesn't get that toy that he wants at Walmart. He's just going to control it. And then that toy, that little race car or action figure is going to come up and, like, bully you. But you like as a human being, I feel like that's not life threatening at all, and you can like take that down pretty easily. You don't need to be a superhero to take that down. But it is an interesting power, so that's why he's not number ten, and he is number seven. Uh, moving on, we've got at number six we have Sandblaster. He was created by Joshua Williamson and Carmine D. Giamandicchio, if I'm saying that right, uh, for the Flash Run in 2017. 
The villain was made to fill the void of rogues while they went missing in the Flash run. This character seems very unexciting, very lackluster. Along with Sand Blaster's power to literally just shoot powerful blasts of sand from his hands. Sounds like he was made up on the fly to give the Flash a quick rogue to fight off. And he reminds me of a lot of the Marvel Comics film Sandman. And he might not turn himself into sand, but maybe he like shoots it and he just creates sand. Not life-threatening, but I think comparing toys to sand, sand might be more threatening to toys, so he ranks above Toy Boy. Now, these villains so far have been kind of just up and down. Like, who would have thought of creating that? And Like, why would you even put that in a comic book? So now these villains seem like they can make a good villain, but there's still that, like, C to B level villain as you move into the top five. Maybe they pose a threat, but it's not as big as a Joker like Sleuthor, but it's definitely more of a threat than a Condiment King uh, type. So at number five, we have the Kite Man. He first appeared in Batman number 133 of August of 1960 and was created by writer Bill Finger and artist Dick Sprang. Although his, su his superpower is having excellent hang gliding skills and knowing how to fight with kites, which is impressive, he is still mediocre compared to other DC villains. Uh, he's also named after the Peanuts character Charlie Brown. So, Kite Man has become a more popular villain over time, including an appearance as a main character for the Harley Quinn show on HBO Max. The fourth worst DC villain created is called Scarface. Arnold Wesker, debuting in Detective Comics number 583, he began his life as an orphan who deeply repressed nature, we led him to one day lash out, and... Uh, made him go to Blackgate Prison, and he acquired a dummy called Scarface, who was dressed up as a 1920s gangster, and they instantly become inseparable. Under the dummy's influence, Wesker is a ruthless criminal overlord, and while he sees himself as being forced to do the dummy's evil work, per se, the overall consensus is that he suffers from multiple personality disorder, and Scarface is his deadly, darker self. And it reminds me a lot of Moon Knight, where maybe Moon Knight doesn't have a dummy, but he's going through when he's got that personal, di like, multiple personality disorder, and maybe, like, the two of them just do things out of will, but they, like, blame their other person, and it's not necessarily one or the other. Moving into the top three worst ideas DC has ever had for a supervillain, is very interesting as we have had some wackos on this list of the video. Moving into spot number three is the villain known as Polka Dot Man, uh, also known as Abner Krill. He first appeared in D Detective Comics number 300 and was created by Sheldon Moldoff and Charles Paris. This idea to me is really dumb and makes DC look like they're running out of superpowers to give uh, to people. And I don't see that as a threat, but because he was in uh, James Gunn's The Suicide Squad, I feel like he got a bit more love and a bit more passion and his character got fleshed out. And even though he, spoiler alert, he dies, um, it is an interesting character, but still pretty weird up there for a superpower to have. Being able to shoot polka dots would not be... Um, in my top 50 superpowers, I think. Uh, number two, the second, like, outrageous, insane supervillain that I came across would be the Blue Snowman, making her first appearance in Sensational Comics number 59 in the year of 1946. This character was created by William Moulton Marston as a nemesis to the Wonder Woman. Blue Snowman is just like a person dressed up as a snowman with a snow gun that create, could create and reverse the blizzards along with being a woman posing as a man just and calling herself the blue snowman kind of weird i mean you gotta be kind of psycho to be like yo i'm gonna dress up as a snowman but i'm gonna call myself the blue snowman even though like snowmen are blue and i feel like being able to create like winter storms and blizzards 
is kind of high up there, but with today's advanced technology, it's not as threatening as it was when this character was created. But um, according to my research, she was imprisoned for a time, then escaped and formed the Villain Incorporated as some other B-tier villains in order to take on the Justice League. So that was interesting. So like, she's more into working together as a team, maybe. And although like the Blue Snowman isn't a threat by herself, maybe she, the Blue Snowman is more of a threat like with other villains. So that's um, interesting to me. And at number one, the worst DC villain of all time, according to boxes of comics and no one else, is the villain known as Microwave Man. That's right. I, he is called the Microwave Man. Um, he was known as Lewis Paget. Microwave Man just seems like a perfect choice for the top spot for, in our list, making his comic debut in... Uh, in Detective Comics 487 and only having one appearance after that issue in 488, uh, this really says something uh, about the character as Lewis Paget was a turn of the century, 20th century scientist who discovered how to give himself superpowers using microwaves. And microwaves at the time were only used for broadcast, uh, creating the costume identity of Microwave Man. He created a few robberies with the police helpless to stop him. Just as fast as he appeared, he disappeared. He wasn't that popular. Superman handled him pretty fairly. And all of that helps him gain the top spot as the worst DC villain created. Because, like, when you create a villain, you want him to have multiple appearances. You want a Joker. You want a Lex Luthor. You want a Cheetah. You want Reverse Flash. But no. You're just like, let's give powers to a microwave and have this guy be like, I'm Microwave Man. And I'm going to, like, blow you up with my radioactive microwave. I know, it's weird. But hopefully this list shows and teaches you that publishers can and will make a character out of anything. These characters are wacky and fun and deserve almost as much love as the Jokers and Lex Luthors in the DC Universe. And sadly, that's all the time we have to, for today's video. If you enjoyed that content, make sure that you hit that like button. Go ahead and subscribe and share our video for more wacky content. So, who is your most wacky uh, DC supervillain? Or give me some wacky superheroes, you think? You know, maybe I do a sequel uh, to this video and have the top 10 wackiest DC supervillains. So, that's all the time we have for today. Uh, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time on Boxes of Comics.